Hello everybody, welcome back for another week of Let's Play You Don't Know Jack. And 30 seconds, people. Today I scoff my hat in reverend to all the fallen heroes from time in memoriam. And what better way to honor their memory than for you to play a trivial video game? How heroic. Any which, how many players do we have? One little player. Oh well, why don't you enter your name? Why don't you enter your name? Why don't you? Still, uh, no. Oh, ho, 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 no. I asked for a name, and I want name, gash dabbit. You're gonna be precious. Based on the novel Push by Sapphire. <laughs> okay, now here's what's going to happen, Stance. Many questions will prevail themselves upon you. You need to wingle out the correct choice and impress the boutonniere next to it. There is a timer that's tick tockling away. That means the sooner you are to buzz in, the more De Niro you'll make. <laughs> or Squeender. Okay, you're ready on set. Ten seconds. Off you glow. 80, cell phone check. Oh, you Six. Press eight. Five. To go to black. Four, go ahead and touch three. someone with other people's fingers. Hey, I'm Cookie, and if you want to add a twist to your drinking water, squeeze a lime or cucumber slice into it. It's just the two of us. Please don't kill me. And I today's no wrong promises. answer of the game is being brought to you by... Meow! Inappropriate cat accessories. Because your cat has pissed you off for the last time. Sniff out our sponsor's wrong answer of the game, and you'll end up with a great prize and serious cash. Yeah, as long as it's not the okay, let's know, begin. Animal Lovers Boutique or Jarvex. Okay, to get things started, that angel wears too much eyeliner. How would illusionist Chris Angel perform a vanishing hat trick? He'd vanish three times in a show? In sports such as hockey, a hat trick is when a Sorry. player scores three times in one game. But if he just vanished once I and for all, that'd be fine. I did not mean to pull the trigger that fast. Been playing too much of the Facebook version, apparently. Coming up. I have a degree in geography. Food. You ever seen these things the contestants have to eat on Survivor or Amazing Race? I mean, do they realize when they eat those live beetles and spiders, they're eating the poop in their intestines too? I would never eat a live beetle or spider, unless I was assured it had just been given an enema. Anyway, which potential Amazing Race food challenge includes a food named after its country of origin? German chocolate cake-fed maggots, french fries and bull's testicles, toenails marinated in Russian dressing, or intestine with a side of Turkish delight? Mm. Pretty sure french fries aren't French. We'll go with turkey. Time. Turkish delight, the yeah. sweet confection, originated in Turkey. But turkey originated in America. You can tell because when you eat one, it tastes like freedom. Never considered freedom Here to be we a have quantifiable The taste. Jerry Orchard. And it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven titles. For each one, I want to know if it's a play by Anton Chekhov or an episode of Seinfeld. If it's Chekhov, Press the number one. If it's Seinfeld, press two. Right answers will get no you 300 idea. bucks. But answer wrong, and it will be worse really than the don't. series finale of Seinfeld. Let's have 30 Jeez, seconds on I the clock. That one, cool, let's do yeah. it. The Cherry Orchard. The Chinese Restaurant. The Maestro. The Wedding. The Contest. The Seagull. The Virgin. Not bad. Decent. I'd say you're George Smart. Not Jerry or Elaine Smart, but you know, smarter than Kramer. Well, yeah, that's something anyway. My favorite Seinfeld episode was the one where Kramer concocted that outrageous plan and George kept having bad things happen to him over and over. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Oh, that was a good one. Everybody I introduce, from the makers of Infant Mortality Rate, Travel Edition. If the board game Life released different versions based on the average life expectancy in various countries, which of these editions would make for the shortest game? Life America Edition, Life the United Kingdom Edition, Life Italy Edition, or Life Japan Edition? I want to say Japan has the shortest lifespans. The 
the penalty is no different, but so you know, this is the worst answer you could have picked. Probably. Want to see the right answer? I have no idea. At roughly 78 years, the CIA World Factbook ranks the USA around 50th in world life expectancy. Lower than the UK, Italy, or Japan. Huh. Of course, in the game of life, if you get married, buy a house, and have children, you'll feel like you're dead at around age 30. Where's the bomb, girl? Not really true, but could be. could be. Up next, let's party till the credits roll. If Bradley Cooper's character in The Hangover held the occupation of a Cooper, what would he have said at the start of the movie? I have Dudes, no idea. get ready for a crazy night of cheese making. We're gonna forge steel till the sun comes up. Guys, let's just sit around and blow glass all night. Or tonight, we're gonna make so many barrels. Cooper sounds like someone that makes barrels to me. A cooper is somebody who builds and repairs barrels for a living. I actually would have preferred it if there were some sort of barrel for that scene where the naked guy jumps out of the trunk. Any sort of barrel blocking the view. A pickle barrel might have been appropriate. Let's say so long to round one. And surprisingly, you're doing pretty well. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. And don't forget, our wrong answer of the game is still out there waiting to be picked. Okay, we're bringing it on. Why not try burnt to smithereens? What might employees of The Simpsons' Mr. Burns call him if a fire destroyed his epidermis, dermis, and some underlying tissue and muscle? C. Montgomery first degree burns, C. Montgomery second degree burns, C. Montgomery third degree burns, or C. Montgomery fourth degree burns? I'm pretty sure they call that a third degree. No? They call it a fourth degree then. Smart people choose this. A fourth degree burn involves the destruction of the dermis and epidermis as well as damage to the underlying tissue, muscle, or bone. I can imagine how difficult it must be to locate yellow skin grafts. Maybe from Regis Philbin. Well, he's more of an orange. Question. So sticky. Hello. Here's one I like to call gentlemen like to be solicited. Which literary gentleman might receive a direct mailer for a gentleman's club if the mailer were sent to the Pemberley estate? Brett Butler or current love interest? Mr. Darcy or current male protagonist? Heathcliff or current vengeful lover? Or Ernest Worthing or other? And Pemberley estate, never heard of it. Now wait, 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 wait. Were you thinking of uh -huh. this one? Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy, the male protagonist in Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, lived at Pemberley. Did they even have gentlemen's clubs in 1800s London? Kindly remove your outer garments. Now would you please take off your foundation garments? Yes, quite lovely. Heathcliff? Well, the cat's out of the bag. And so is its riding gear. You want a cat saddle from our sponsor, <laughs> Meow! Inappropriate cat accessories. If your cat could thank you, it probably wouldn't. Today's <laughs> wrong answer of the game is accompanied by an $8,000 cash bonus. Have at it. Plugging chickens, picking out a mate. Guess I'll marry eight. Coming up next, pick a number, any number. Which TV show was on the air for more seasons than the number in its title? Six Feet Under, Seventh Heaven, John and Kate Plus Eight, or 24? Oh, let's see, which one would have survived longer? Seventh Heaven sounds like a good bet for that. Seventh Heaven ran for 11 seasons. And speaking of heaven, those 11 seasons really felt like an eternity. Up next, Stir Friday Nights. Most Chinese restaurants these days advertise that they don't use MSG. It's so annoying. I had to drive all over the place last night just to find a place that'll give me dangerous doses of delicious sodium. Which reminds me, I still need to read my fortune cookie. Cookie, fortune cookie, fortune twist. Cookie, fortune cookie, messy set. Okay, here we go. When life gives you apple slices, take the largest piece. Mm. 
Hey, how do they know I was gonna be moving to New York City? Well, if that's the case, which piece of the Big Apple should I move to? The Queen Slice, the Brooklyn Slice, the Manhattan Slice, or the Staten Island Slice? No idea. Yeah, which is the biggest? Why do I think Brooklyn's it? Nope. No, no, I'll get this. The largest borough by area is Queens. My female friends who live in New York told me that if I ever moved near them, I would totally be the Samantha of the group. I have no idea what that means. Me Neither do I. Let me go. Probably something to do with French diaries. Or... No May I introduce... Who got feces on the space bar? Ew. If a room full of chimps on typewriters managed to collectively type one actual word every week, what could they conceivably write in one year? The Pledge of Allegiance, the Preamble to the U.S. Constitution, the Gettysburg Address, or the lyrics to Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up? One more actual word every week? Hmm. Which one contains nothing but words? Only 31 words in the pledge. Those chimps could crank that out in under eight months. <laughs> Want to see the answer? The preamble is 52 words long, so the uh. chimps could write it in a year at one word a week. Of course, instead of signing it, they'd smear it with their own feces. Just like Ben Franklin. That's what I get for thinking. Which one has the most real words? Once you count old for English the words. When you see two clues that Go match, figure. press one. Four thousand big ones if you're right. Four thousand gone if you're wrong. And most importantly, remember the clue. It's got to be a match that fits this clue. Who's in charge of our town? You may or may not do well on this one. Good luck. his name. Yeah. <laughs> Almost let that one get by me. Yeah. Adam West, I believe, is their mayor. Yeah. Yep. I have no idea. Never watch Buffy, folks. There we go. Eh, I only missed one. Well, only hit one wrong button anyway. That's the game! Wow, you did a really great job, and no one can take that away from you. I'll remember this moment for at least, uh, wait, what are we talking about? You don't know Jack! That's a wrap. Donnie, what's happening? All right, give me the hay sign if you're interested in more playage. No, you have no more pledge. Don't know what this to is do the end them. of another week. Well, now you don't know Jack. Your worries on the shelf. See y'all next week shelf for shelves. more. Shelf shelves are made As always, for you shelves. get the commercials, and, and I get to go away now. Shelf. Bye. That's a lot of shelves. Shelf shelves saved my life. I really wanted to kill my shelf. Don't get stuck with unshelved shelves. Buy shelf shelves today, and do your shelf a favor. Did you know that 12 cups of raw spinach has as much sodium as an order of french fries at McDonald's? Did you say as much sodium as french fries? And that 54 cups of spinach has just as many calories? As many calories as french fries? Makes you think twice about eating spinach, doesn't it? Yes. Spinach. Is it really strong to the finish? Vote no on Proposition 14H and keep spinach and other vegetables out of our schools. Hello, I'm Nick Bear, and I'm not here to sell you anything.
I used my own money to buy some advertising time to let the world know that I hate Jeff Hansen. This isn't a tricky sales ploy or a joke. Seriously, Jeff Hansen of Chicago, Illinois is a real person and a jerk and I really hate him, a lot. I am not a rich man. This commercial is expensive and is taking most of the money that I would use to send my children to college. But if it makes any of you understand just how much I hate Jeff Hansen, who is a real person who works in Chicago and lives in Evanston, has brown hair and is about six foot four, then it will be worth it. If I have one hope, it is that spending my entire life savings in these scary economic times will burn the name Jeff Hansen into your brain so that if you ever have the misfortune of actually meeting him, you will remember just how deeply and totally I hate this man and take it as a warning to steer clear. Thank you for listening. Unless you happen to be Jeff Hansen, in which case, f you, sir. Hey, everybody. This is Mike Builder, general manager of Jellyvision Games, the makers of You Don't Know Jack. We're hard at work here on the floor of the Jellyvision Game Design Workshop, coming up with great games that you'll be playing in the years to come. So keep your eyes peeled for some of our upcoming products, like Angry Yoga, Vampires vs. Show Dogs, Wacky Oki, What's That Smell, Newscaster, Tax Preparation 3D, Space Farts, Enough About You, and Tween Fighter. We're also working on lots of casual games that are fun for the whole family. Puppy Bucket, Everybody Help Grandma, Jarts, awkward confessions, and so much more. So if you love fun and fart noises, clear some room on your game shelf for the Jellyvision games of the future. You dress yourself to the nines every day. Why shouldn't you do the same for your friend with nine lives? At Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, we stock hundreds of unnecessary adornments to shamelessly decorate any cat. We've got cat saddles, kitty swim trunks, feline infrared goggles, and introducing the electronic cat translator. Feed me, leave me alone, go f yourself. So if it's cute, if it's teeny, and if it probably shouldn't go on a cat, then you'll find it at Meow Inappropriate Cat Accessories, located between the Bicycles for Dogs Warehouse and the Lizard Mittens Emporium. Hello, I'm Senator Bruce Stegmeyer. I'm hard on crime, and I approve this cartoon bonus sound. I'm so embarrassed, Barbara. I just don't know why this is happening to me. Maybe it's time we considered getting a little help. What about a prescription drug? Or maybe I should just put my dick in a splint. Trouble chubbing up? Scared of pills? Now there's help from Professor Willie's Dingle Splints, the only $5.99 over-the-counter solution.